Since the mid-1990s, JICA has used a PDM project design matrix based on the PCM project cycle management method. JICA began to conduct various research studies on women in development in the early 1990s. Since 1996, it has taken an active approach to gender mainstreaming. The concept of gender mainstreaming means integrating a gender perspective into every process of the project. But the traditional PCM method has no gender perspective. Unless the standard JICA's project management method integrates a gender perspective, this entire area disappears from our awareness. As a result, the beneficiaries of projects often end up being overwhelmingly male or female, and projects are unable to achieve the expected results or targets. In other words, JICA is unable to offer the detailed aid which is its mission. In order to avoid such negative outcomes to the projects, it's necessary to plan and design projects from the gender perspective. That is one of the most effective methods is the Gender Responsive PCM. あの従来 JICA で行われてきました PCM その結果出てくる PDM にはジェンダーの視点がなかなか入りにくかったんですね。それで、えー、今回そのジェンダーリスポンシブ PCM というこの手法を開発していただいてでそれを実際のプロジェクトで実際に応用しながら少しずつ改良を重ねて今のジェンダーリスポンシブ PCM にの手法に到達したんですそれでその結果どうなったかって言いますと PDM2 の問題分析のところからジェンダーの課題を抽出するという作業をしてその結果を活動プロジェクトの活動にジェンダーの視点が入った活動をきちんと入れ込む自然に入れ込むということができるようになりました。Gender Responsive PCM is a way of managing projects from a gender perspective that's based on PCM. By identifying gender-based issues during workshops, participants can be aware of the idea of the gender issues in the targeted region. Since the Gender Responsive PCM workshop adopts the participatory method, it becomes possible to build consensus regarding gender awareness and gender problems. By reflecting those results in the PDM, the activities to resolve gender issues can be organized logically. So what concrete steps should be taken? Gender Responsive PCM is the integration of the gender perspective into the previous PCM method. It can be used for any possible project and can involve people at a wide variety of different levels. The first step is to carry out a stakeholder analysis, disaggregating gender. The second step is problem analysis. Find out whether there are hidden gender issues in each problem. The third step is objective analysis. Clarify goals from a gender perspective. And in the fourth step, choose a project in considering those results. And finally, develop a PDM. In this way, the gender perspective is integrated into overall objectives, project purposes, and activities. Thus, every aspect of the PDM. Finally, you can complete a gender responsive PDM. So let's start to see the steps of gender responsive PCM one by one. The first step is stakeholder analysis. In analyzing stakeholders from a gender perspective, use a categorical analysis table divided by gender like this. 
clarify the organizations, groups, and people involved in the targeted area, the problems and issues, and categorize stakeholders by gender. Then, take this one step further by analyzing the problems and needs of the group targeted by the project in a situational analysis table disaggregated by gender. The next step is problem analysis. This step is the most important part of gender responsive PCM. Firstly, carry out problem analysis in the same way as in ordinary PCM. Let's take a look at an example of an agricultural project in a problem analysis. The core problem, household income from farming is low, is further analyzed. It is assumed to have three direct causes, which are agricultural productivity is low, agricultural products can't be sold at an adequate price, and that cash crop yields are low. Now let's focus on one of the problems, which is cash crop yields are low in the lower right corner. Farmer can't procure a water source for cultivating cash crops. Cash crop cultivation methods are not disseminated. And need for cash crops is not recognized, are found out as reasons why cash crops aren't produced. The reasons for these three problems are respectively analyzed and shown below. In a real PCM, these cards would be further segmented, but in this material, it is focused on these three problems as an example. The next step is to identify gender issues. It is absolutely important to find out gender issues properly, because they will become the foundation of later project design. However, it is often hard to identify hidden gender issues. So what is the best way to find out those issues? Let's move away from the gender responsive PCM sequence and take a look at some general ways of discovering gender issues. Gender is generally defined as the difference between women and men which is socially and culturally constructed. The concept of gender exists in any society and does not itself include value judgments. This is good, this is bad. But in reality, there are numerous forms of gender-based prejudice, division of labor, discriminatory practice or constraint, and its issues. They provide disadvantages over women, men, or both sexes and threaten their human rights. In this case, the issues can be said gender issues. However, gender issues are not just about being male or female. It is also necessary to examine from the aspects of social attributes such as religion, age, and class. This is because discrimination is sometimes ignited by multiple factors. What perspective is needed to find gender issues? Firstly, let's take a look at disaggregated data by gender. You can identify whether there is a gender gap and what kind of gender gap exists. Then, look at the role of men and women in the targeted area and in the sector of the project. It's necessary to understand the circumstances of the most vulnerable group and to know who manages the relevant resources and benefits. Next, we'll take this a step further by looking at popular methods for social and gender analysis. There are three steps in the process of the social and gender analysis. They are activity profile analysis, access and control analysis, and influencing factor analysis. 
These steps examine who does what, how they do it, and why they do it. It's an analytical approach which offers new strategies to be fair. Let's take a look at each step. The first step is activity profile analysis. This approach identifies the tendency of three types of activities, which are productive activities, reproductive activities, and community activities in each population group as defined by the stakeholder analysis. Using the activity profile analysis table, it makes clear who tends to participate most in which activity, such as farming as productive activity, household chores and fetching water as reproductive activity, and ceremonial occasions as community activity. Daily timetable analysis looks at how men and women spend their time every day and is another part of activity profile analysis. This is the result from a farming community in Tanzania. In this example, although the men wake up at 5 a.m., the women have already left to collect water by 5 a.m. The men take two hours off for lunch. On the other hand, the women continue farming with barely any break at all. This is an example from Nepal. It is clear that men and women play different roles at different times. By comparing male and female activity in this way, it becomes easier to see the best time to hold training sessions and meetings. Access and control analysis reveals the resources and benefits in the resident's living environment. Access is the opportunity to use the resources which are necessary for economic activities, such as land, equipment, technology, capital, education, and food, as well as the benefits of the resources, including income, wealth, and clothing. Control is the management of such resources and benefits. Who owns and decides about them? Access and control analysis looks at whether groups can access or control the resources necessary for productive, reproductive, and community activities. These resources include skills, capital, technology, land, and time. In other words, examine whether people or groups can decide on resource use for themselves and manage and own them. This is an example of an access and control analysis table. It is clear that, for example, although men and women can both use land, women do not have ownership of it. It also shows that only men have access to, or control of, income. It enables us to examine whether men and women have equal use and ownership of resources, as well as whether they receive appropriate benefits for their contribution and responsibilities. This table uses a circle to express yes, and a cross for no. However, it's also necessary to analyze the situation in more detail. The influencing factor analysis is a way to examine the reasons for the inequalities seen in the activity profile and access and control analyses. This analysis examines whether political, economic, and cultural reasons have a negative impact on people's productive, reproductive, and community activities, as well as the resources and benefits. If there is any inequality, it also examines the reasons for the disparity. This is an example of an analysis of influencing factors table. It considers the impact of agricultural skills training from the perspective of education. As general household income increases, the surplus can be used for female education, which would raise the female school attendance rate. 
However, men have more opportunities to take part than women. As one of the reasons, it can be identified that the mobility of women is restricted by local customs and religion. By utilizing these analytical methods, we can more clearly understand the gender situation in the project's country or area. In this case, we could identify six main gender issues. 1. Women's burden of household work, including fetching water, is heavy. 2. Women are not permitted to go out often. 3. Women's participation in decision-making is restricted. 4. Women's role in farming is not recognized. 5. Female literacy rate is low. 6. Women's opportunities to receive skills training are limited. Although it is ideal to discover gender issues during a period of detailed planning survey, you could conduct analysis based on existing documentation and data. Once issues are discovered, number them and explain the nature of the problem. There's no need to consider order of importance in numbering them. Naturally, the subject of each sentence is not necessary to be women. Although six gender issues have been identified in this case, in practice, there may be many more gender problems. Now let's go back to the example of the project and find out the hidden gender issues, which were identified from the social and gender analysis in the problem analysis cards. In identifying gender issues, it's often easier to find them by examining the cards placed lower on the chart. Let's take the card at the bottom left. The card reads, Water source is distant. In developing countries, fetching water is usually a woman's job. Women not only fetch water, they also take care of all the household chores, raise the children, and take part in farming work. As a result, they often suffer from overwork. This can also be seen in the activity profile analysis. In this way, we can select the first gender issue. 1. Women's share of household work is heavy. Local customs and religion may restrict women's mobility. It is difficult for women to go out even to fetch water. This can also be revealed using an influencing factor analysis. This leads to the second gender issue. 2. Women are not permitted to go out often. In building a well or watering place, communities often form irrigation management committees. However, the members are nearly all male, and in many cases, the location and management of the well is decided by male opinion alone. Despite the fact that fetching water is a female task, women's opinions are not respected. This can be revealed by an access and control analysis. This leads to a third gender issue. 3. Women's participation in decision-making is restricted. Now let's look for the hidden gender issues behind the card Farmer does not have agricultural skill training. The heavy burden of household work on women and their limitation of mobility make it difficult to attend training. The gender issues 1 and 2, hidden in the Water Sources Distant card, are also present here. In addition, although women assist with farming work, men sometimes do not recognize this contribution. This leads to a fourth gender issue. 4. Women's role in farming is not recognized. Look for gender issues in the same way with the remaining cards. Once you've found the hidden gender issues for each card, write in the issue numbers.
The next step is an objective analysis. Write up cards that phrase the problem as being already solved, as in an ordinary objective analysis. Rephrase the issues that came up in problem analysis and draw up an objective tree. As we did earlier in problem analysis, let's take a closer look at the card Cash Crop Production Increased. The way to turn gender problems into gender objectives is the same as in an ordinary objective analysis. Remember, express the objective as though it has already been achieved and be realistic. Add gender objectives in the remaining space. Finally, develop a PDM. Choose a project in the same way as an ordinary PCM. Here we assume that the choice has been made. Firstly, use regular PCM methods to create a PDM from the objective analysis. We've already found six gender objectives. Add a gender perspective to the project purpose, overall objectives, and outputs by referring to these gender objectives. For example, if the project purpose is production of cash crops increased, then write, male and female farmers are contributing to increasing the production of cash crops. Then, Consider the necessary activities to achieve the gender objectives. Make sure to offer concrete, realistic activities. Put activities and gender responsive activities together. There's an activity numbered 0 in the gender responsive PDM. Activity 0 involves encouraging stakeholders to pay attention to gender, explaining and promoting the mainstreaming of gender. In other words, take gender-sensitive action to help other activities. If necessary, you can add more activities by writing 0 0.1, 0 0.2, etc. Next, based on the analysis results, Let's decide on result indicators for both activities and gender-responsive activities. Also clearly state the necessary inputs, such as human resources, equipment, and capital needed for activities and gender-responsive activities. The PDM is now complete. In this way, Gender-responsive PCM can be effectively used in all aspects of JICA's project planning and designing. For example, you can use this material in participatory workshops for training on how to frame gender-responsive projects. We asked participants of the workshop for their feedback. まあ、ジェンダーの視点でプロジェクトをあの作ることがやっぱりプロジェクトの,あの目標達成につながるんだろうなっていうことはまあなんとなく思っていたんですけどもじゃあそのためにどういう活動をしてまあそ,その背景にはどういう問題があるかっていうのをなかなか具体的にあの自分の中であの把握できていなくてまあ今回あの題材にしたプロジェクトについてもどういうふうに具体的に盛り込んだらいいのかっていうのを考えあぐねていましたので非常に良かったです。活動レベルにきちっとあのジェンダーの視点で落としていけるっていうところがいいんじゃないかと思います。ジェンダー問題点のあのいろんな背景、その国とか地域が持っている背景とかまであの分析をす今回もしたので、それが良かったんじゃないかと思います。はい、あと私二三週間後ぐらいに
プロジェクトを設計する調査に行きますのでその中でうまくあのこの視点を生かせればと思っていますとそうですあんまりそのジェンダーというのはまあ言葉は知ってたんですけどもそのワークショップとかで、まあ、時間をかけてしっかり考えたことはなかったので、まあ、いろんな人の意見とかアイディアを勉強できて面白かったなと思います。実際に作業上その従来の PCM のステップの中にまあそのジェンダーの課題を考える場面があったはありましたそのジェンダーの課題を抽出するところまあすごく難しかったんですけどもまあそういうことを考える機会がある PCM でした。自分は PCM の普通の方はあの計画立案までやったんですけども計画立評価モニタリングまでで、まあ、あれかなり機械的に割とこうシステマチックに物事が進んでいってあれはある意味でまあかなり時間をかけて洗練されてきたものだと思うんですけどもあの今回の、えー、手法はまだあのできたばっかりのものだと思うので、まあ、もう少しこう悩む条件が減ってあのシンプルに進めていけるようになるとよりこうみんながすっと分かりやすくなるんじゃないかなと思います。PCM というのはもう JICA の中であの国際協力に携わるものとしてえほとんど全員がそのきちんとそれを理解し、えー、適用している,いるんですがそこにジェンダーのこのジェンダーリスポンシブ PCM を入れることによって、えー、JICA の事業全体が、えー、ジェンダーに敏感な事業になるあの職員の方も専門家の方も習う段階で、えー、ジェンダーリスポンシブ PCM を,を学んで、えー、自然に、えー、ジェンダーのことを考えるような仕組みにしていきたいというふうに思っています。ワークショップのあの中身の方に入りたいと思うんですが。このプロジェクトはジェンダー配慮をしてありますか？なんていう一項目をポッと入れるとかですね。そんなような感じにしかならなかったんですね。それですと結局配慮を示したかって書いてあってもどうやってそのワンダー共和国の農民組織強化プロジェクトに適用したあの関係者分析ということで、今お手元にある資料などを参照しながらあの関係者を分析し,したと。どうしてこの3つだけかというところもあると思うんですけれども今のところちょっとプロジェクトの枠があるからあのここをこの辺でたらどうするのかリーダーはいかない。ジェンダー課題というのは、強制だったり、不利益だったり、あの人権侵害だったり、そういったものをまとめて、ジェンダー課題というふうに呼んでいます教育が不足しているから、仕切り率が低いってなったり、あの関連っていうことだから、うん、あのそういう、あのあれ意外と。そこは中心問題のところもあの直接結果のところも同じで直接結果は直接目的に関係する。<笑>なんかこのような感じであの通常の PCM の過程と同じように。うんまあ、例えば水汲みとか家事もちょっと減らさないといけないんだけど、そんなプロジェクトで。<笑>その中に必ず一人でもいるので、そ,、ねうん、その辺もかなり現実的な。見てください、セーバーで。本当に作業。判断視点に立つということで。<笑>